Hello, in part two of our time series data um, tutorial series in pandas, we're going to be finding price and volume variation by day, month, and year. So the way we're going to do this is we're going to have to learn about shifting data frames, uh, grouping date time, and our index is date time, really. Um, and we'll see a pretty cool uh, pandas feature where you can group by uh, on a daily basis, you can group uh, on a weekly basis, or you can um, group months. And I think I also have years in there as well. So the first thing we're going to do is we have to get our data back again. And if you've seen part one of this tutorial series, um, we went over sampling, uh, rolling mean, uh, um, in other words, like smoothing our data, uh, basic linear regression, um, filtering our data frames, uh, a simple join, and we went over plotting our time series data frames. So the first thing we're doing from part one is we're importing our libraries and we're going to get the data again. This is the same thing as always. So the next thing you have to do is um, in this tutorial we're going to find daily price variation. So I have a link and I'll put it in the description on how you find daily price variation. And essentially it's taking the, the high price. Um, for us, it's our high column in our Google data frame minus the low price. And that's pretty simple. And essentially um, Pandas makes it very easy to find the difference. However, um, some sources say that you want to find uh, the daily price variation by finding um, one day's opening price and then uh, find the difference between that day and the next day. So the first thing I'm going to do is show you that in Pandas there's something called a shift where it can move um, your values in a column or multiple columns um, upward or downward. And the reason why you want to do this is if you want to find the difference between two days, it'll be pretty easy to just shift the data frame downward and then subtract it by what it originally was. So in our original data frame, this 162 was up on March 16th, which was over here. And the result um, is it just went downward. So in this cell over here, um, I'm just showing that this is the daily price variation. You'll notice that um, on March 16th, we still have a NAN, right? Um, because we had nothing um, on the day before, which was March 15th in this case. However, if you want to display your data and you don't want to have NANs, Pandas has a nice drop NAN function or drop NA function which essentially, in this case, only gets rid of um, our March 16th because that was a NAN. So next thing we'll do is we're going to calculate monthly price variation. And Pandas has um, group by. It's a very SQL-like group by. And you can group by date time, which is wonderful because our index is, group, is uh, a date time. So this pd.time grouper essentially will allow us to group by month. And max is just an aggregate function uh, finding the, the max um, price uh, for the, all the columns here. And essentially we're gonna have another aggregate function in the next cell. And I'm not saying this equal to anything because I'm just showing what the data frame is gonna look like. So we have a min here, and essentially it gives the max price over here and the, the minimum price for this given column in this given month. Group by is amazing. It should be part of uh, most of your toolkits, I hope. So this is the resulting uh, monthly price variation when we subtracted the or when we did the max minus the min and 
one thing of interest here is if the stock growing a lot over time and you have a, a, a large um, a large amount of time, you might want to normalize this um, in some way to show percentage uh, growth or something of the sort. And that's something you can uh, figure out for yourselves. And if you have any questions, I will have her answer in the comments if you're curious. So the next thing we're going to do, this is just for demonstrational purposes, is we're going to group by year. So this frequency uh, equals um, A. This is annual. So it's, it's yearly, right? So essentially in this cell we found yearly price variation. And we use the same aggregate functions, max, and we use min. Um, in the cell below, I'm just demonstrating that you can find other things. Um, you can group by um, months, and you can find the, the sum number of trades in a given month. And hopefully you can find some sort of pattern over time. See if some months you have a larger volume. And it'd be nice if... Um, how we got our data if it supplied um, more years so you can find a more definitive trend. We could probably bin this and do a histogram and it'd be essentially nicer to have more data for this. I'll see if I can find a better source. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to plot the price variation by day, month, and year. Um, what I'm doing in this cell is I'm making a day column. Uh, it's just easier to plot for me. It's a personal preference really. And this allows you to have a date column and essentially you can just plot two columns against each other and that's what we have down below. We have our um, price variation figure and this subplot um, index zero is daily price variation. We have monthly price variation and then we have yearly price variation. So that's it for this tutorial. And in part three, we're going to cover, well, how do you find out what this point is? Do we, could we do like more interactive graphing? And we're going to get into that. Maybe a little D3, uh, maybe a little Plotly, and, you know, um, some Matplotlib. Matplotlib is not the best for this sort of stuff. Um, essentially, we're going to have like hover tools where if you go over a certain point, you will um, see what the actual value is. So... You can not just plot it, but you can uh, interact with the data, which is very important. So if you have any questions, please comment, and have a great day.